Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 9.5 vertical motion under gravity. 9.5 represents chapter 9, section 5 of the person A level mass applied mass year 1 textbook. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section. We are going to start off with vertical motion modelling assumption. Number 1, air resistance is neglected. Number 2, external forces is neglected. And number 3, weight and spin of the particle is neglected. The particle is modelled as moving freely under gravity. The acceleration due to gravity is represented by g, which is equal to 9.8 meters per second per second in A-level mechanics. Now, gravity acts vertically downwards, hence the acceleration due to gravity g equal 9.8 meters per second per second also acts vertically downwards. What is the definition of time of flight? Well, time of flight, ladies and gents, is the time taken whilst the particle is up in the air. What is the definition of speed of projection? The speed of projection is the initial speed of the particle. Consider the following diagram. We've got point A and we've got point B. We are looking at the motion A to B. At A, the time t is equal 0 and the initial velocity is u meters per second. At B, the time t is equal capital T and the final velocity is v meters per second. The acceleration due to gravity acts vertically downwards and the displacement from A to B is s meter. Let's have a look at the constant acceleration formulas. Number one, we've got V equal U plus AT. Number two, we've got S equal U plus V, all over two in brackets multiplied by T. Number three, we've got S equal UT plus a half AT squared. Number four, we've got S equal VT minus a half AT squared. And finally, number five, we've got V squared equal U squared plus two AS. These formulas will be given in the formula booklet. These are the key facts of 9.5 vertical motion under gravity. I'll be implementing these key facts within three exam style questions. Let's have a look at exam style question 1. A small stone is projected vertically upwards from a point O with a speed of 19.6 meters per second. Modeling the stone as a particle moving freely under gravity, find the length of time for which the stone is more than 14.7 meters above O. Ladies and gents, with any constant acceleration formula questions, it is particularly useful to draw a diagram. So I'm going to draw a diagram to model this particular problem. Firstly, we've got that a small stone is projected vertically upwards from a point O with a speed of 19.6 meters per second. So here is the point O. Here is the stone at time t equals zero. The initial speed, or you could say the initial velocity, is 19.6 meters per second. The particle continues to move upwards. Call this point A and consider O to A to be a displacement of 14.7 meter. The particle continues to move upwards to a point x until it reaches its maximum height above O. At a maximum height, for a split second, the speed or the velocity of the stone will be 0 meters per second. The acceleration due to gravity acts vertically downwards, g meters per second per second. Now the stone will reach A for the first time for a certain t value, let's call it t1. It will then move upwards and then come back to A at a second t value, we can call it t2. We want to find the length of time for which the stone is more than 14.7 meter above O. So that length of time is basically going to be t2 minus t1. Let's start by working out t1 and t2. So consider motion O to A and we're going to take upwards to be the positive direction. So we can write SUVAT from O to A, S the displacement is 14.7 meter. The initial velocity U is equal to 19.6. The final velocity V at the point A we don't know so we can just put an X there. The acceleration due to gravity will be minus 9.8 because we're taking up to be positive and g acts downwards. And the t, basically we can keep it as t. So we are interested in s, u, a, t. The correct SUVAT formula that we're going to be using in this scenario is number three, s equal u t plus a half a t squared. So let's proceed forward. We've got s equal u t plus a half a t squared. So now we can carry out the substitution. So we've got 14.7 equal 19.6 t plus a half multiplied by minus 
t squared. So we have 14.7 equal 19.6t minus 4.9t squared. We can take everything to the left hand side. This gives us the following quadratic equation. 4.9t squared minus 19.6t plus 14.7 equal to 0. So now I can solve this quadratic equation. So if I solve it, I get t equal 3, t equal 1. So my t1 is basically 1. After one second, the particle, or you could say the stone, reaches A. And my t2 is 3. So the stone will continue to move up to X and come back to A at time t2 equal 3. Okay, so we can call this one here t1 and this one over here t2. So now if I go back here, therefore, the length of time for which the stone is more than 14.7 meter above O is given by T2 take away T1. So we've got 3 take away 1, which is equal to seconds. And that there, ladies and gents, completes exam style question 1. Let's have a look at exam style question 2. A small stone is projected vertically upwards with a speed of 20 meters per second from a point O, which is 5 meters above the horizontal ground. The stone is modelled as a particle moving freely under gravity. Find part A, the speed of the stone at the instant when it is 2 metres above the ground. Let's start by drawing a diagram to model this particular problem. Firstly, we have that a small stone is projected vertically upwards with a speed of 20 metres per second from a point O, which is 5 metres above the horizontal ground. So this is my horizontal ground. This is the point O. This is the stone. At time t equals zero, we have that the speed is 20 meters per second acting vertically upwards. We've got acceleration due to gravity acting vertically downwards, g meters per second per second. So what we have here is that O is five meters above the ground. Right, the stone is modeled as a particle moving freely under gravity Find the speed of the stone at the instant when it is 2 metres above the ground. OK, suppose that the stone is at a point A, which is 2 metres above the ground. OK, what we want to do is work out the speed at the point A. So the stone travels upwards, then it comes down at the point A. So the velocity at A acts vertically downwards. Question mark. We're trying to work out that velocity. Okay, so for part A, we're going to look at the motion O to A. And we're going to take upwards to be the positive direction. So that So going from O to A, we're going downwards. So uh, because we've taken up to be the positive direction, the displacement will now be negative. What we have is 5 take away 2, which is 3. So we're going down from O to A by 3 meter. And so up is positive. The displacement S has to be minus 3. So we've got S equal minus 3. U, the initial velocity, is 20 meters per second. V, the final velocity at A is question mark. That's what we're trying to work out. Acceleration due to gravity acts vertically downwards since we've taken upwards to be the positive direction. A is equal to minus 9.8. And the time uh, taken for the stone to reach A, we don't know, so we can just put an X there. So the quantities that we are interested in is S, U, V and A. So S, U, V and A fit the constant acceleration formula number 5. V squared equal U squared plus 2AS. So we can write down the formula. We've got V squared equal U squared plus 2AS. Carry out the substitution. So V squared is equal 20 in bracket squared plus 2 in bracket minus 9.8 in bracket minus 3. So we have that V squared is equal to 458.8. So we can take the square root of that. And we have that V is equal to 21.4 meters per second to three significant figures. 
Okay, so the speed of the stone at the instant when it is 2 meters above the ground is 21.4 meters per second. Let's move on to part B of the question. The total time taken between the instant when the stone is projected from O and the instant when it first strikes the ground. Okay, so let's call point B the point at which the stone strikes the ground. Now there's a misconception, some people feel like the velocity at which the stone strikes the ground will be zero uh, because it comes to rest. No, that's incorrect. If I've got this pen and I drop it, at the instant when it strikes the ground, it will hit the ground at a certain velocity. We don't know what that velocity is. I thought I'd just clear up that misconception. Anyways, let's go back to part B. What we want here is the total time taken between the instant when the stone is projected from O and the instant when it first strikes the ground. Okay, so we're looking at motion O to B. Again, let's take up to be the positive direction. So we have Suvat. So O is the point of projection. So from the point of projection, O going to B, um, where the stone strikes the ground, the displacement S has to be minus 5. We've taken up to be the positive direction since we're going down by 5 meter, the displacement has to be minus 5. U, the initial velocity is 20 meters per second. V, the final velocity at the point B, we don't know. So let's put an X there. The acceleration due to gravity is minus 9.8. We've taken up to be a positive. So since the acceleration due to gravity acts downwards, we take it to be the negative 9.8. The time taken t is what we're trying to work out. So let's just call it t. We want to work out the total time taken between the instant when the stone is projected from O and the instant when it first strikes the ground. So we're after t. We have uh, the following important quantities, S, U, A, and T. So if we go back to our constant acceleration formulas, this fits the third one, S equal UT plus a half AT squared. So we can write down the formula, S equal UT plus a half AT squared. Carry out the substitution, Clean this up, so we've got minus 5 equal 20t minus 4.9t squared. Take everything to the left hand side. And then solve the quadratic equation. So ladies and gents, we get t equal 4.31 to three significant figures. And we get t equal minus 0 0.236 to three significant figures. Now time can't be negative, so we reject this solution and we accept this one here. Okay, so the total time taken between the instant when the stone is projected from O and the instant when it first strikes the ground is 4.31 seconds. That there completes exam style question two. Moving on to exam style question three. At time t equals zero, a particle is projected vertically upwards with a speed u meters per second from a point A. The particle moves freely under gravity. At time t, the particle is at its maximum height h above a. Part a, find t in terms of u and g. I'm going to start by drawing a diagram to model this particular problem. At time t equals zero, a particle is projected vertically upwards with speed u meters per second from a point a. So here is point a, here is the particle. We have time t equals zero, and we have a speed of u meters per second acting vertically upwards. So the particle continues to move, until it reaches its maximum height at a certain point, we can call that B. The maximum height above A is defined as H, and this maximum height is reached at time T equal capital T. At the point B for a split second, the velocity will be zero meters per second. We've got acceleration due to gravity acting vertically downwards, which is G meters per second per second. Part A, we want to find T in terms of U and G. So let's have a look at the solution to part A. We're going to consider motion A to B, taking upwards to be the positive direction. Suvat. So, 
So from A to B, we have that S, the displacement is H. U, the initial velocity is just U. From A to B, the final velocity is zero. The acceleration due to gravity is minus G. We're going to keep it in G form because our final answer has to be for T in terms of U and G. Um, by the way, we've taken upwards to be the positive direction. And because the G is acting downwards, the acceleration has to be minus G. And from A to B, we have that the time is capital T. Okay, so uh, we're going to apply a certain SUVAT formula. And that SUVAT formula is V equal U plus A T. Carry out the substitution. So we've got zero equal the initial velocity is just U plus the acceleration, which is minus G multiplied by capital T. Okay, so we've got zero equal u minus gt we have to make t the subject so if i rearrange i get gt equal u therefore t is equal u over g so that there's t in terms of u and g let's have a look at part b of the question show that h is equal u squared over 2g again we're going to consider motion a to b let's take up words to be the positive direction. Write down SUVA again. So we've got S equal H, we've got U equal U, we've got V equal zero, we've got A equal minus G, and we've got T equal U over G. But I'll just keep the T as capital T for now. Okay, right, so uh, this answer over here has a u squared involved, so the SUVAT that I'm going to use to introduce a squared term will be v squared equal u squared plus 2as. Carry out the substitution, so we've got 0 squared equal u squared plus 2 lots of minus g, and s is h. Okay, so I've got 0 equal u squared minus 2gh. Rearrange this, I get 2gh equal u squared. Therefore, h is equal u squared over 2g as required. So that there, ladies and gents, completes exam style question 3 and this teaching video 9.5, a vertical motion under gravity. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.